TRU and Bradford are some of the best agents I've ever worked with. The best times I have had in my career, I've had with you too. You may not see yourselves as agents, but you are. That is what makes you good. You are not full of yourselves. You are as close to naturals in the counterintelligence business as I've ever seen. McNamara still asks about you, Bradford, but Hoover doesn't. The three laughed. I can understand why, Rube. After I sent his letter of commendation back to him, he couldn't have been too happy. Hell, that's an understatement. He was steamed. His face turned beet red. I thought he'd drop over right there. But there is one thing about Jay Ager. He knows talent and when to use it. He registers all this in his head, never forgets, and despite personal misgivings, he will not hesitate to call upon it at critical times. And what makes these critical times? Bradford asked. Castellano pondered a minute. Ordinarily gruff and gregarious, he felt quiet. He set aside the question by ignoring it. You know, you two are celebrities around here. Well, I wouldn't characterize it that way, Rube, Lehman responded. In some ways, it has made me a target. I don't have a career in the military because of it. Sure, you have a career, Bradford. You just need to be an ass-kisser. But since you're not an ass-kisser, the MOF, Medal of Freedom, becomes a force multiplier against you. Some folks around here admire you for that, though. One is Jerry Johnson. You may have legions against you, but if their commander, a lieutenant general in this instance, is on your side, you are going to be just fine. By the way, I told Jerry you are a golfer, so one of these days you will be included in his foursome. That is a sure path to promotion. Rube gave Lehman another toothy grin. Jerry knows you are getting short shrift by your supervisors, but he and your intelligence director at Boss Colonel St. Clair know what's going on and are getting a kick out of it. Both have commented to me that they respect the fact that you do not complain. You handle it yourself. Oh, and another thing. Rube leaned closer. They bugged the hell out of me to tell them what you two did to earn the MOF. I told them they did not have the need to know, but that in carrying out your mission, you neutralized three Russian GRU agents. I told them that you were called headshot layman at FBI headquarters. That tickled the hell out of them. Jeez, I bet it did, Lehman said, shaking his head and putting it down. Rube clapped him on the shoulder. Brighten up, sunshine. I think I have found a way to let the two of you do some mountain climbing on Air Force time. Really? Tio asked. Yes. There is an opportunity for both of you to travel to Nepal. The Brits have asked for our assistance there. Why? Bradford asked. Nepal is Britain's oyster. It has had a political foothold in the country ever since the wars with the Gurkhas in the 19th century. Out of mutual respect between the Gurkhas and the British Army, a love affair has prevailed between them ever since. Yes, Bradford, succinctly put. But there are some operations better handled by third parties rather than directly. This is one of them. Our British counterintelligence friends at MI6 have asked for help. In this instance, we have technical capabilities that they need. They have superior access and expertise within the country. Of course, they also have excellent high-altitude climbers, Unfortunately, like the Whitaker brothers from America, many are widely known and are therefore unusable. The small villages in Nepal transmit information among themselves with startling speed. Famous mountaineers are their idols. So the need arises again, as it did on Mount Rainier, for discreet operators. And we are it, Bradford said. Bingo. We are in, Tia said. What about my teaching and Bradford's intelligence job? Bagfield, no problem. And tell you what, you two. Give me a couple of days, and I'll brief you on the operation, Rube said, downing the rest of his beer. Layman looked at his watch. Time to get back to the shift. The Vietnam War and the massive daily stream of B-52 sorties supporting it were not waiting on a long lunch.